these are the features of the Nespresso Zenius machines. There's the three different coffee lengths, which is basically the espresso shot. This could be a bit of a longer espresso shot, which could be the base for a latte. And then the long espresso or Americano. And at the bottom, there is the hot water function, which can be used for tea, or it could also be used to thin down the espresso shot like they do in a coffee shop for an authentic Americano. Then the water tank sits on the back of the seniors. There's two liters of water in it, so that, that's enough for quite some espresso shots. Or if you prefer, there is an option to hook it up to the direct water line. To make an espresso, you take the capsule and the only thing that has to be watched out for is that the edges are flat around the capsule, which they are on this one. If it ever looks like this, just make sure you flatten it out before you insert the capsule. And the reason why that is, is because an espresso is extracted under high pressure and if the machine cannot seal it around the capsule, it cannot open up the capsule for the coffee to come out. In this case, the capsule is in. We'll press the button and of course we do need a cup underneath to get that espresso shot out of it. I'll stop it here manually just to show you the next steps. When you open up the handle of the machine, the capsule falls into the capsule container. And this is basically the cleanup at the end of the day. Take this one out. The capsule container, which contains the used capsules, can go into the recycling bin. And the drip tray needs to be emptied and rinsed. And that's about it. Very low maintenance for an authentic espresso like you would get in a coffee shop. This is how to set up the milk frother by an espresso. First of all, there's a little water tank on the side of the machine. It needs a bit of water for the steam. And put it back into the side. It's like a little bit on an angle, if you can get a close-up on it. To put it in, it has to be a little bit on an angle and then it clicks right in. You can turn on the machine with the power button here. It takes approximately one minute to heat up and be ready. The milk canister, which takes one liter of milk and it keeps it cold for up to eight hours. Basically a whole working day, but the chances are pretty good that you will go through the milk before those eight hours are over. Put the lid on and then take the straw, which gets the milk to the machine. Put it into the milk frother, push it back in, and then you see the light blinking, that means the machine is heating up. Also a good tip is this nozzle here can be unscrewed and sometimes it does get a little bit loose. It's important that this piece is all the way in and tight. Before you attach the nozzle itself, make sure there's a little bit of steam coming out by pressing the top button and you can stop it manually by repressing and then attach the nozzle first to the straw and move the canister to the middle, press it up onto the machine and make sure the straw is connected to the nozzle itself. There's two buttons on the unit. The top button is a pre-programmable amount of milk that comes out by shut. By each time you press it once, it will give you that amount of milk. And the plus button is an on-demand button to get milk out as long as you press the plus, milk will flow. And as soon as you stop it, or let go, it will stop. I'll demonstrate it, the plus button, as long as I press it, the milk will flow. As soon as I let go, it will stop. This is meant to do like an espresso macchiato with a little bit of milk froth on top, or if somebody just likes a little splash of milk in their Americano, that's what the plus button is meant for. And the top one can be programmed to your cup size to get, from, to get a full cup for a latte. The end of the day maintenance on the frother is quite simple. First of all, take the nozzle off, move it to the side. This can be detached and put into the recycling bin. This is the most critical thing on the unit. At the end of the day, before you turn it off for the night, 
press the top button and let the steam come out. This cleans out the nozzle itself so there's no milk residue left. And I'm gonna turn it off manually now, but it's nice to just let it run its course so it turns off on its own. Give a wipe to the nozzle itself here with the two red O-rings, then turn off the machine. Pull out the milk canister. If there's still a lot of milk in there and it has been less than eight hours, put it in the fridge and keep it for the next day. But I do recommend to put it into the dishwasher every other day or so, just to give it a good clean. Don't put the drip tray into the dishwasher. Simply empty the drip tray into the sink and give it a rinse manually and then put it away for the night.